Welcome to this video where I want to have a look at our nearest habitable exoplanet to the solar system or to Earth. Now it's not just a planet orbiting a star, this particular exoplanet that's habitable actually orbits three stars, it's in a triple star system so it makes it a little bit more interesting than a normal exoplanet. It's also our nearest one, it's habitable and its name is Proxima Centauri b. So what we're going to do is have a look at the actual planet itself, the star that it orbits, and the other two stars that that star itself then orbits as well. So the planet itself is a little bit bigger than Earth. It's about 1.3 times the radius of Earth, so it's a bit physically larger, and it has a little bit more mass. So it's a little bit more massive than the Earth, but it's kind of almost comparable in size to the Earth. It's a little bit bigger, basically. Now, the star that it orbits, Proxima Centauri, is quite a small red dwarf. So in comparison to the sun, it's quite small. It's called a red dwarf because obviously it is red as well. And the reason why it's red is it has quite a low surface temperature. So in comparison to the sun, it's almost half the temperature. So the sun is almost 6,000 Kelvin surface temperature, whereas Proxima Centauri is just under 3,000. So it's almost half the surface temperature, which gives it a cooler color basically. So that's why it's a reddish color as opposed to what the sun might be or another star. So that's why it's a red dwarf, because it's small and it's red. Now, the actual system that Proxima Centauri is in is the, is the Alpha Centauri system. So you've got Alpha Centauri A and B, which are a binary system of two larger stars. And then you have the third one, Proxima Centauri, which is part of that. Now, that can also be called Alpha Centauri C, because it is part of that triple system, but it's also known as Proxima Centauri. And out of those three stars, Proxima Centauri, the red dwarf, is actually the closest to the sun. And it's not just the closest exoplanet that is around that particular star, that star is our closest to our sun. So not only is it the closest, it has a planet around it, it also has a habitable planet, which is almost comparable to Earth. It's not completely comparable because it's orbiting a red dwarf. So there are some differences there, but planet-wise, it's fairly similar. So very close to our system, this particular system. Now, the actual orbital period of Proxima Centauri b is just 11 days. So we take 365 days to go around the sun. This will take 11 days to go around Proxima Centauri. So that means it's very close to its star. So its semi-major axis, which is its orbital radius, is 0.05 AU. Now, 1 AU is the average distance from the Sun to the Earth. So you're looking about 5% of that, di that distance for its orbital radius for this one. And to put that into context of the solar system, really, our closest planet to the Sun is Mercury. Now, that has a semi-major axis of 0.4 AU and an orbital period of 88 days. So even our closest planet is nowhere near as close as Proxima Centauri b is to its star. Now it can do that because it's a red dwarf, so it's a much smaller star, it's giving off a lot less light, so it can still be habitable because of that. Now because it's so close, when planets get very close to their stars, and the same thing happens with moons actually, if a moon is very close to a planet, or the closer that it is, the tides play a bigger role in it. So that means that as the planet is rotating and spinning on its axis, that's what gives us our days and nights, there's a tide or a drag from the star that's trying to slow that down. And over time, you can get it to be tidally locked. That means the same face will always face towards the star. So it will rotate once on its axis in the same time period it takes to go around the star, which is what we will then refer to as tidally locked. And each night you can look up in the sky and you can see our moon that is tidally locked. That will always show the same face facing towards us as well. So when stars have planets that are very close to them, tidal, tidal locking is quite a common thing. Now, even though it's very close, because it is a red dwarf and it's a very small star, it can still be in the habitable zone. So Proxima Centauri b is on the inner edge of the habitable zone. So potentially a bit hotter than, than the Earth because it's actually on the inner edge of it where it would get more energy from its star than maybe what the Earth might do. But nonetheless, this is in a location where it could actually get enough 
energy of liquid water and surface. So it's in the habitable zone and it's near us. That's which, which is quite exciting actually. So the actual system itself. Now the main part, Alpha Centauri, is a binary system of A and B, and they orbit a common center of mass between the two stars, and that has an orbital period of just less than 80 years. So about 79.76 years it takes for those two stars to orbit one another or orbit their common center of mass. And their semi-major axis, their separation, is about well just under 24 AU, which actually is quite close really. Um, so the interesting thing about these two stars is that they have quite a high, well, very highly elliptical orbits. So it means that they are, well, their orbits are elliptical, like displayed here, but it means that they get closer and further away during their orbits. So they, their separation between the two stars will change during their orbital period. So they have a very high eccentricity, which gives us the elliptical orbits that they have. So they don't just always stay the same distance from each other, which again, is an interesting aspect of it really. Adds a little bit more dynamics to it as well. So Alpha Centauri A is almost kind of sun-like. Its radius is a little bit more than the sun's, at just over one. The mass is about 1.2 times the mass of the sun, and it's a little bit more luminous. So it's about 1.5 times the luminosity of the sun. So it's a bit brighter than our sun by a half a century. And this is the, the main primary component of the system. And then Alpha Centauri B is a little bit smaller, so it's a little bit smaller than the sun. It's about 0.9 times the radius of the sun and just slightly less in mass wise, so about 0.86 or 59 times the mass of the sun. And it's about half the luminosity. So this one is quite a bit dimmer than the sun, doesn't give us much energy, whereas the other one would be about half. So one slightly smaller than the, the sun and one is slightly bigger than the sun. So they are in this binary system. Now, around the outside of that, you then have Proxima Centauri. So you have this red dwarf, which is then orbiting around the outside of Alpha Centauri A and B. And its orbital period is, well, 547,000 years. So it's on a very wide orbit this time around and it's semi-major axis is about 87 or sorry, 8,700 AU. So it's, it's quite, quite a wide separation. But again, if you have a look at the illustration here, I, I'd probably point out at this point that this is just purely for illustrative purposes. And it's not to scale, it's just to show you the, the general configuration, really. You can see it's going to be quite elliptical there. And it, it is, again, quite elliptical. It has a quite a high eccentricity. Of its orbit similar to the A and B of the Centauri system of about a half. Just to point out, if you're not familiar with eccentricity, the higher the number, the more elliptical the orbit gets. And once you get to one and you go beyond one, it's no longer on a bound orbit. So it will actually be on a hyperbolic orbit, so it will never actually be bound to the object. So something of 0.5 is quite high. It also has a very high inclination. So again, this is a little bit unusual. If they all form together, you'd expect an inclination to be in the same sort of plane as the main binary system. So they would all be orbiting in the same plane. So if you think about the planets in the solar system, they are all orbiting approximately in the same plane. They have very small inclinations. So if you have something that's very have a very high inclination, it likely didn't form like that, and it would have to have come from somewhere else. So because it's got a very high inclination and a high eccentricity, this could suggest that this small red dwarf was captured by the central binary system, the main Alpha Centauri system, later on after they form separately. The stars are all moving around in the galaxy and sometimes they can get close to each other, they have flybys. If they get close enough and they're traveling slow enough, they can get gravitationally captured and then they become part of that system. The fact that this has a very high inclination and eccentricity might suggest this formed elsewhere and was then captured. So this red dwarf that has our habitable planet might not even have formed in this triple star system. It could have happened after it actually formed. So this isn't the only planet in the system as well. So I've only mentioned really 
Proxima Centauri B, which is in the green zone, which is the habitable part. But there are two other planets there. Well, I say two, potentially. So Proxima Centauri C, I believe, is it's not 100% confirmed. There's a signature there which could hint at being a planet. But Proxima Centauri D, which is on the inner part, so it's inside the habitable zone, is obviously a lot closer. It's going to be too hot, not habitable. But Proxima Centauri B is a, is a bit further out. And again, that's not 100% confirmed but the one we're really interested in is Proxima Centauri B in that habitable zone it's our closest planet it's habitable it's earth size and it's not that far away so could we go visit there has it already got life on there's some interesting things that we can maybe find out about this planet going forward so thank you for watching and if you enjoy then check out some of the other videos